Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to our Mass today, the 13th Sunday in the Church's Ordinary Time. Mass today is being offered for the people of the parish. God is the giver of life. And in the miracles of Jesus, we see the power of God at work to restore his creation so that we may enjoy the fullness of life which he always has intended for us. Let's pause to prepare now. God, who fashioned all things into being, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. God, in whose image we are made, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. God who changes our mourning into dancing, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant, we pray, that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. First reading, a reading from the Book of Wisdom. Death was not God's doing. He takes no pleasure in the extinction of the living. To be, for this to be, he created all. The world's created things have health in them. In them, no fatal poison can be found and Hades holds no power on earth, for virtue is undying. Yet God did make man imperishable. He made him in the image of his own nature. It was the devil's envy that brought death into the world, as those who are his partners will discover. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. You always have the most of everything, of faith, of eloquence, of understanding, of keenness for any cause, and the biggest share of our affection. So we expect you to be put the most into his work of mercy too. Remember how generous the Lord Jesus was. He was rich, but he became poor for your sake, to make you rich out of his poverty. This does not mean that to give relief to others, you ought to make things difficult for yourselves. It is a question of balancing what happens to be your surplus now against their present need. And one day they may have something to spare that will supply your own need. That is how we strike a balance, as scripture says. The man who gathered much had none too much. The man who gathered little did not go short. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia. Your words are spirit, Lord, and they are life. You have message of eternal life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had crossed in a boat to the other side, a large crowd gathered round him, and he stayed by the lakeside. Then one of the synagogue officials came up, Jairus by name, and seeing him, fell at his feet and pleaded with him earnestly, saying, My little daughter is desperately sick. Do come and lay your hands on her to make her better and save her life. Jesus went with him, and a large crowd followed him. They were pressing all round him. Now there was a woman who had suffered from a hemorrhage for 12 years. After long and painful treatment under various doctors, she had spent all she had without being any better for it. In fact, she was getting worse. She had heard about Jesus, and she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his cloak. If I can touch even his clothes, she had told herself, I shall be well again. And the source of the bleeding dried up instantly, and she felt in herself that she was cured of her complaint. Immediately aware that power had gone out from him, Jesus turned round in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? His disciples said to him, You see how the crowd is pressing round you, and yet you say, who touched me? But he continued to look around to see who had done it. Then the woman came forward, frightened and trembling, because she knew what had happened to her, and she fell at his feet and told him the whole truth. My daughter, he said, your faith has restored you to health. Go in peace and be free from your complaint. While he was still speaking, some people arrived from the house of the synagogue official to say, your daughter is dead, why put the master to any further trouble? But Jesus had overheard this, Jesus had overheard this remark of theirs, and he said to the official, do not be afraid, only have faith. And he allowed no one to go with him except Peter and James and John, the brother of James. So they came to the official's house, and Jesus noticed all the commotion with people weeping and wailing unrestrainedly. He went in and said to them, Why all this commotion and crying? The child is not dead, but asleep. But they laughed at him, so he turned them all out, and taking with him the child's father and mother and his own companions, he went into the place where the child lay. And taking the child by the hand, he said to her, Talitha kum, which means, little girl, I tell you to get up. 
The little girl got up at once and began to walk about, for she was 12 years old. At this they were overcome with astonishment, and he ordered them strictly not to let anyone know about it, and he told them to give her something to eat. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Over these weeks, we're following St. Mark as he has Jesus speaking to the crowd, but also to the inner circle of the disciples. And last Sunday, we saw Jesus being revealed as the Lord of nature in the midst of the storm. And today, we have him as Lord of human life, especially for those who are frail and in need of, of healing. So, I wanted to dwell on that a little. Um, just a little caveat at the beginning. When we have these stories of Jesus healing, we need to be careful not to treat the Gospels like a, a medical textbook because people in our Lord's time had a very different conception of, of health and illness to the ones that we have today. Nevertheless, let's look at these uh, stories of, of the healing touch of Jesus in the Gospel today. Now, I've got a confession here to make straight away is that when I prepared this weekend's Mass, I was unaware that we were going to get a, a story on the front page of all the newspapers over the last day or so about the, the Minister for Health. So bearing that in mind, here is what I, I was preparing. And I, I want to be careful not to overstep something here. During the week, earlier la last week, I, I met some friends of mine, a couple that I've known for a, for a long time. And the instinct, of course, when you see someone, we, and we hadn't met since before the pandemic began, uh, about 15, 16 months ago, the first instinct is to, is to hug, to give a kiss. Now, I don't want to take the moral high ground here, but we, we remained unhugged because that seemed to be the best thing to do in the, in the present circumstances. Now, we know over, the, over this last year there's been a lot of comment made, articles written about how the lack of, lack of touch, of human contact, not being able to kiss those who are our, our closest friends and family, has been a real deprivation. And there's worries about the, 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 the well-being of people being deprived of that kind of contact with, with others. It has to be noted, though, too, that running alongside that is a great unease about inappropriate touch, about, particularly this is a, a problem for women, where, where men assume even in public spaces that they can touch women inappropriately, and that can be sometimes quite, quite violent and, and, and really damaging to, to those who are affected by it. We do seem to have problems about getting the right level, the right balance of how we, we react to each other physically and in close contact. I just wonder how we can get this right. When I was in the parish in, in Stevenage, we had the parish primary school was right next to the, the house where, where we lived. And I used to go into the school very regularly. And I was one day in one of the infant classes. And there was a six-year-old boy who was upset about something and was crying quite, quite a lot. And the lady teacher, who was a very maternal sort, she took the little boy onto her knee and she caressed him until eventually he calmed down and he was able to go back to his activity. Now, at the time, this seemed to me the most natural thing in the world to do. The, the child needed reassurance, and, and he got it, and he was able then to carry on. Subsequently, I was in conversation with one of my nieces, who is a teacher, and she said to me that there are many teachers now who simply won't touch a child because of the fear of being misinterpreted. This is a very difficult area where 
We know that touch can be so reassuring, such an important part of life, and yet it seems to be so dangerous in other, in other ways. Well, what would Jesus do? Well, the fact is that in our gospel today, Jesus does seem to venture into quite dangerous and risky behavior. There are the two instances. There's the, the older woman with the loss of blood and the, the young girl. Now, in the case of the, the, the older woman, the, the fact that there was blood involved would normally have been a taboo for someone like Jesus either to touch or to allow himself to be touched by a lady in that condition. It was going against all the conventions that he would have known. With the, the, 12, the 12 year old girl, which seems to us a very young age, but the girl would have been of marriageable age. And for a man to hold her hand, again, would have been quite inappropriate and quite scandalous to people. So we find Jesus here acting in a way that in his own situation would have been regarded as quite wrong, not the thing that he should have been doing. What can possibly justify it? It may be quite simply this, that when Jesus brings touch, it's not to indulge himself, it's wholly for the good of the other. It's to give them life, to make their lives better, to enhance them and give them a greater share in creation. We know that a kiss, uh, a handshake, a reassuring contact can be so important in our lives and without them, life would be immeasurably purer. But can we ourselves use that as a check on, on the way that we interact with, e with each other? When Jesus touches, it's wholly beneficial. Can we say the same? about the way that we behave with others. Let's proclaim <clears throat> Our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> In the Gospel today, we hear of Jesus healing in the jostling of a crowd and in the tender intimacy of a grieving home. We gather now with our different needs, 
but united as one in the prayer of faith. Let us pray for the church throughout the world that filled with God's spirit, Christian communities may be faithful disciples following the Lord, the way of justice, peace and truth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all the bishops, priests and deacons of the church that they may be strengthened in their ministry of service and discipleship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we celebrate the feast of St. Peter and St. Paul on Tuesday, we pray that we may each recognize our many different gifts of service within the church and offer those gifts to build up the church in this place. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all who are called to public service. We pray especially for the ministers of government dealing with the virus, the vaccination rollout and the travel arrangements that they may work for the common good in the service of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for this week's mass intentions for the people of the parish, for the relations of Alice Victor, for Dominic Lopez on his birthday, for Celia Persad and Maud Serimari. We pray for the repose of the souls of Maria Divison, Walter Mistretta, Anna Notarbartolin, and Charles Sagayam. May their souls and the souls of all the faithful depart it through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all parishioners who are sick, especially those in hospital or suffering from the virus. We pray for their recovery and well-being. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Let us pray for all our departed friends and family, and for all who have died, that they may rest in the joy of the living God. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us ask Mary, the mother of the Lord, to pray with us as we say, Hail, Hail Mary, Mary, full of, full of grace, grace, the Lord, Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Now, let us pray for a few moments in silence for our own needs and intentions. Father, may the power of the Spirit alive in Jesus awaken us from the slumber that deadens us to the promptings of your grace and grant these our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ. We humble yourself to share. Humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. 
Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we have to you and your blood and come to our hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Let's pray now, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Lord, accept the sacrifice at your hands, the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of a virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Vincent, our Bishop, and all the clergy. <clears throat> Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, 
and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Through Jesus we have learnt to call God our Father, so we have the courage to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. <clears throat> deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us bow to each other as a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. Amen. blood of Christ. Amen.
let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being at Mass with us here today. A few notices for the parish for the week. The funeral for Joan Brennan will be on Monday, the 28th of June. That's at 12 noon here in the church. Tuesday is the feast of Saints Peter and Paul. Masses on Tuesday will be at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. Registration forms for First Communion and Confirmation for next year's programme are available in the porch and they can also be found via the website. Food bank collection continues on Sunday from 8 to 6 o'clock. Items requested this weekend are jars of cooking sauces such as pasta sauces, 500 grams of sugar, tins of baked beans, tins of tuna, and empty egg boxes for 12 eggs. Thursday evening this week, the Zoom session is a COVID island discs, but up to now, we didn't have details of who that uh, is going to be. And there's a young adults outing to Ivanhoe Beacon on Saturday the 3rd of July. For more details, you can find a, a note in the newsletter. Thank you all for being here and I wish you a very pleasant week. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Thank you.